Someplace, Somewhere, an original short story by Jared I. McGee. Somewhere man could not quite get his plans together. He knew that he had places to be and great deeds to accomplish, journeys to undertake, ideas to engender, universes to move. But... He couldn't quite remember where, and when, and how, all that was supposed to come about. He knew that he had something important to do, because he was still in his threadbare brown tweed suit. It was a bit raggedy, but it was his and it suited him. The fuzzy mahogany brown trousers, vest, and jacket were highlighted subtly with threads of gold and auburn and a slightly lighter brown, darker than sand but lighter than the surrounding pines. He had his faded brown leather dress shoes on, and he was even wearing his grandfather's pocket watch. The watch only came out for major doings, so something, indeed, was pressing. He checked the watch as he paced his front yard, wondering what on earth he'd forgotten. He scratched his balding head, only to realize that he was actually scratching his bedraggled bowler hat instead of his scalp. He shook his head and snickered at his own silliness. Lifting his hat, he took care of the offending itch and then went back to pacing. Somewhere man's home was pretty nondescript. It was white, with white shutters and white roofing. There used to be extensive flower beds and orchard that ringed this somewhere house. But they'd been waning toward non-existence when he'd moved in, and he'd forgotten to try to revive them. So, only a few rogue blooms and shoots came up anymore. He didn't often think about the splendid cemetery of plant life that surrounded him. He was too busy forgetting everything else that was going on in his life. Which was... What was it again? He knew he had something extremely important to do. Somewhere man heard an incessant yap 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 coming from his front window. Beasley! That was one thing Somewhere Man didn't ever forget. Beasley, his best friend and the cutest beagle pup imaginable, was asking for food. Yes, Somewhere Man often got busy and did not walk Beasley as much as he would like. But Beasley was forgiving and he never, ever pottied on the floor. Somewhere Man did not forget to feed Beasley. In fact, the schedule that he and Beasley had come up with for themselves together was the only tether on routine and reality that kept Somewhere Man from floating off into the mental ether that threatened to engulf him at any given moment on any given day. He made his way in, scratching the dog on the nape of his neck, just where he liked it, and went to get Beasley some food. The cabinets were absolutely stuffed with big bags of the dog's food because Somewhere Man knew full well that he would forget to buy more. So he bought hundreds of pounds every time he went to the market in the village. Since Beasley only ate about a cup a day, half a cup for breakfast and half a cup for dinner, this meant that the dog was never close to being out of his daily meals. This planning ahead and general consistency carried more meaning to Somewhere Man than all the hastily scrawled notes and all the pinned pensives in all the world. Beasley was fed. Beasley was let out. Beasley was walked on a meandering walk where somewhere man got a bit lost because of staring into the clouds and thinking about what shapes they made. As they wandered, he picked up one blue jay feather and one cardinal feather tucking the contrasting colors into the small band above the rim of his hat. 
That bit of color would do nicely for that thing he would be doing later. Thankfully, Beasley became insistent on changing their path and led him home before they got too far into the surrounding forests. The forests could be dangerous after all. Somewhere man entered his house, letting Beasley off the leash. He went to feed and water Beasley, but he found that he'd already done that. So odd. He certainly didn't remember doing that at all. As he put Beasley's excess food back into its bin, Somewhere Man realized that he was hungry. Upon trying to remember the last time he ate, he quickly came to the conclusion that he absolutely did not know. So he made himself a cheese sandwich. White bread, white cheese, no condiments. That was his favorite. Not his favorite taste, but it was his favorite to make. It was quick and easy, and he didn't ever end up forgetting the makings for it on his stove or his counter or his bed or the bookshelf like he did other, more intricate sandwiches or foodstuffs. His sandwich went rather quickly and he fed the crusts to Beasley. The crusts were too rich for his tastes and the little dog seemed to revel in getting a bit of special food from a real plate now and again. The act spoiled Beasley a bit, he knew, but he could not deny his friend the bit of joy that sharing brought. Somewhere man washed his plate free from what few crumbs had made it onto the dish, staring out into the rather sizable backyard and up to the tree line that was moving ever closer to his property. He really would have to get around to beating the forest back just a bit one of these days. That, or his property would be overrun by young pines and oaks and spruces. There were worse things in the world, though. He stared and washed, washed and stared. The circular motion he used to clean his dish was comforting to him. The dishcloth smelled a bit sour. He would really have to remember to do a load of laundry soon. If he remembered correctly, he was running low on both clothing and towels. Maybe that was why he was still in his tweed suit. Maybe he simply ran out of everyday clothes. But that just didn't seem right, it didn't feel right. Somewhere man shrugged off the thoughts of chores, put his dish in the drying rack and went to sit on his overstuffed brown sofa. He giggled as Beasley jumped up to join him, both because the affection from the dog made him happy and because as he himself plopped down, his suit acted as camouflage. Somewhere man could hide in plain sight if he were wearing his tweed while relaxing there. He felt himself begin to doze. Beasley's rhythmic breathing and warm body lulling him to sleep while the mid-afternoon peeked around the cheap blue curtains he had hanging in his parlor. Somewhere man woke to birds singing their last songs of the day, the sun just beginning its descent behind the tall trees in the west. He leapt up, apologized to Beasley for the start, and zipped back out the front door to his front lawn. He was so, so very late, after all. He knew that he had places to be and great deeds to accomplish, journeys to undertake, ideas to engender, universes to move. But man, he couldn't quite remember where and when and how all that was to come about. He knew that he had something important to do because he was still in his threadbare brown tweed suit. His grandmother used to tell him that dressing nicely was a mark of good character and good planning. Somewhere, man, she'd say, you especially should always dress well. If not, goodness knows you're apt to miss your own funeral. They all thought it was so funny back then. He stood staring out into the forest, watching as the sun continued its climb down from the heavens. He smiled at the beauty and shivered as the temperature began to drop, bringing with it darkness. Somewhere man was afraid of the dark. He was afraid of being alone. 
The crunching of wheels on the dirt and rocks of the path to his house brought him out of his own mind. He looked up to see a sable carriage, seemingly pulled by no horses. When it had come just past him, the carriage stopped, and the door closest to him swung open. The interior was too dark for him to pick out details, but a woman's husky, velveteen voice danced out toward him. Somewhere, man. You're late for our appointment. I fear we must move along rather quickly now. He was confused, but she seemed quite confident. She seemed to know what was going on. So he went to get into the waiting carriage. He made his way up to the steps to Beasley's plaintive whines and barks coming to him from all the way across the yard and through the walls of his home. Thank you for listening to Someplace Somewhere. All noises and musical tracks in the background of this story are from freesound.org. The sounds and the musical tracks are all being used under CC0 1.0 Universal Public Domain Dedication Licenses. Well, now that does it for prose this week, but it only begins the adventures of fail and potentially only begins the adventures of Somewhere Man. I truly hope that you enjoyed these stories this week, and I look quite forward to continuing the journey with you all. We will be back together in two weeks' time to leap back into the world of Fael and her kin. Until then, as always, thank you for listening, love those around you, tell them that you do, and embrace this life as it is always stranger than fiction. <laughs>